Welcome to History Happy Hour, a special series from History Uncovered. It's the end of July 2023, and we've handpicked a few of our favorite history stories from this month. Today, we'll be talking about... A vase purchased at a thrift store for just $3.30 that turned out to be from Meiji-era artist Namikawa Yasuyuki. An 18,000-year-old shelter that could be the oldest human settlement in North America. The remains of a U.S. soldier from World War II that were finally identified after 80 years. A Norwegian family who found a Bronze Age rock painting while out on a hike. And another Norwegian family who uncovered an ancient Viking burial site in their own backyard, as well as a number of historical anniversaries, including the beginning of the Battle of Gettysburg, the Boise bombing raid, and the 10th anniversary of the Marriage Act in the UK. I'm all that's interesting staff writer, Austin Harvey. And I'm all that's interesting staff writer, Kalina Fraga. And welcome to History Happy Hour. This is kind of a neat month for both anniversaries and history news stories. Um, I think in general, just news stories we covered on the site too, science ones and true crime and everything. Mm-hmm. But this first one, I like this because it's kind of a a twist on stories we've covered before where we've talked about like amateur metal detectorists who find these things right. and then they end up going to auction for a lot of money. But this one's like even cooler. Um, a couple in the UK was just at a thrift store and bought a vase. They spent $3.30 on it. Mm-hmm noticed Japanese inscriptions on the bottom. And when they looked into it more, it was uh, the work of this Meiji era artist named Namikawa Yasuyuki. He lived between 1845 and 1927. He was a former samurai. Yeah, it's so cool. And which, yeah, I I forget samurai are that recent. Yeah, right. Just what what a neat, an artist and a samurai. It's so cool. Yeah. I mean, Japan's changed so much since the end of World War II. It's almost like entirely unrecognizable from a societal standpoint to what it was before. It's mm-hmm. very interesting. It's always just interesting how long that feudal structure lasted into the modern era. Hmm. Yeah. But um, yeah, Yasuyuki, uh, in addition to being samurai, was an artist. He was really known for this art technique known as cloisonne, which is basically the smoldering of metal hmm. to create a design. Uh, And after they would finish smoldering it, the artist would then fill in the empty spaces with enamel and then fire it in a kiln and then polish the piece at the end. Um, So they found these Japanese inscriptions on the bottom, looked into it. And then the thing that let them, that kind of clued everybody into what it, or to who the artist was, was his signature mark on it, which was naturalistic depictions of birds on a black background. Hmm. Wow. It's so, I mean, we've actually done stories like this or similar ones, mostly with paintings people see in thrift stores that turn out to be worth right. a lot. It just kind of goes to show, you know, keep your eyes peeled in thrift stores. And if yeah. if it's $3 and you're not sure, maybe just get it. And then it's, it's definitely worth it because, yeah, this can fetch up to $11,800 at auction. Yeah. So that's a uh, pretty good ROI on that. Very, very good. Yeah. I like that the guy... And the couple, he turned it over and he noticed the inscriptions on the bottom. And he's like, that's, that's something. Yeah. Good tip. Yeah, because I've definitely picked up like pieces of pottery, um, probably like a mug or something, mm-hmm. you know, that, at a thrift store that has someone's like initials on the bottom. And it's like, oh, that's kind of neat. Yeah. I've never picked up anything like this. Mm-hmm. If I had, I wouldn't be complaining about my student <laughs> loans. <laughs> I mean, that you know of. I Maybe you have picked it up and, and put it back. <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> cut to me like rifling through everything in our kitchen just looking at the bottom right <laughs> yeah it is makes my me... universal orlando mug is this worth anything maybe someday maybe in 100 maybe. years <laughs> maybe. yeah it makes me want to go to thrift stores and like scour the shelves yeah well my girlfriend and one of her friends go thrifting like every other week mm-hmm. there's this thing i don't know if the, i'm sure there's one in new york there's gotta be or something similar but like maybe a half hour from our house in Pittsburgh, there's the bins. Mm -hmm. It's a Goodwill, like warehouse effectively. Okay. And everything's like, what is like a penny a pound or a dollar a bag or something like that. Wow. Like things, things aren't individually priced. You kind of just grab a bunch of stuff. Just random. And then pay for for whatever. She usually gets clothing, Mm -hmm. but I've never gone, but I'm sure there's other stuff. Yeah. Huh. But yeah, you can just load up on it. So go get ceramics and then look through them and see if anything's worth anything. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. There's just one of those stories. It's just like you never know what you're going to find. It's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. I love these ones. And it's always very like 
I don't know, sort of like magical. This thing like could happen to anyone. Yeah, yeah I mean, you could play the lottery or you could go thrifting. Mm-hmm. If you go thrifting, you get something either way. Yeah. It's like thrifting so. and also like look in your grandma's attic or closet and like right, you don't know what right. she might might have there. So yeah, hang out with your grandparents and stop <laughs> investing in NFTs. There you go. Yes, <laughs> you heard it here <laughs> the first. Bubble burst, guys. Let it go. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, our next news story is is much 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 older, an older thing. It's this rock shelter oh, yeah. in Oregon they found that I think is 18,000 years old, which is crazy old. Um, and it might be one of the oldest settlements in North America, which is also amazing. Yeah. Anything that old is mind-boggling. Hard to even wrap your mind around. Yeah. Uh, they determined that this age was a couple of ways, but they found a stone scraper with bison blood, which is wild, and a wow, camel yeah. teeth. And I don't know that they even were camels in North America, to be honest. Yeah, eighteen thousand years ago, were all the continents separated then? I think so. I mean, I know we weren't to Pangea anymore. That was like millions and millions of years ago. I mean, there might have been like the the bridge. They think that was the bearing, right? That the land bridge might have still been around, but I'm not really sure about that timeline. Yeah, that's curious. That's really interesting. Yeah, I also thought it was interesting that a lot of this stuff was preserved under ash from Mount Saint Helens, but a, an eruption from fifteen thousand years ago. Wow. Yeah. That's so weird. I know. It's weird. We didn't witness this in our lifetime, but it's in recent enough history that people have the last eruption of Mount St. Helens. And to think that it did this then and it preserved this stuff is sort of, I don't know, eerie and cool. Yeah. Like a like a natural grave or a natural like preservment of it. Yeah. Right. It's kind of like we talked. To, I, th- I think we brought it up on a happy hour. They found those like really, really old human footprints that were covered up by sand from nearby dunes. We might not have talked about it on here. I definitely wrote about it for the site, though. I don't think so, but yeah, similar like interesting story. It's up on um, all this all that's interesting dot com. So go check it out. But I'll I'll bring up another thing sort of like that, though, which oh, was yeah. oh, that I wrote this week, I think, or last week. But I think it was this week. They they discovered these two like fossils like caught in this like oh final God, like death match so cool. and they were preserved from volcanic like molten mud like they were it was a dinosaur and a yeah. mammal and they were fighting and then they i guess they was hit with this like wave and preserved yeah, i think that's one of the coolest looking fossils yeah I've it's ever really seen. awesome and and that there was some like people like this can't be real it must have been forged but the the researchers were like we're pretty sure this is like legitimate and here's why and yeah. da, 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 da. Yeah, for anyone who's listening and doesn't know what we're talking about, um, just go check it out. Yeah, on it's on the, the website. Site. It's it's a very very cool looking fossil. It's really, it's neat. Just, but it, yeah, like you were saying, it's just so neat how these things naturally like mm-hmm. like we put so much effort now into preservation when we like are storing things for a long time, or like even looking back at like um like mummification processes. It's like all this human, yeah, very natural or very unnatural ways we've found to preserve things. But then it's like. Or you just stick it in some volcano mud and it's good forever. <laughs> yeah, right. That's kind of the key. <laughs> or like the bog bodies. That's like another oh, very similar thing. Oh, yeah. Thing. Yeah, those are all the so in, creepy yeah. and fascinating. Yeah, they're very... It's so detailed. It's like the skin and the clothing and yeah. They kind of just look like malnourished living people. I know. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Very weird. Speaking of human remains... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, uh, they finally identified the remains of a soldier who went missing uh, 79 years ago during World War II. Wow. Yeah, his name was Private Wing Oham. Uh, He was from Boston, fought against German forces in Italy as part of Company B, 7th Infantry Regiment, 3rd Infantry Division of the U.S. Army. Um, I'm not going to (laughs) lie. I don't know how Army regiments work. Yeah, I don't either. So that meant nothing to me, but that's the technical. That's what he was in, B Company. Mm. And he went missing on February 2nd, 1944, near Cisterna di Latina, a a town like roughly 40 miles south of Rome. And he was only 20 years old. Wow. Oof. Yeah. I think they found the remains around the same time, but they were in such bad condition and there were no identifying tags or anything that they just couldn't identify who it was and they finally did mm. thanks to modern mitochondrial dna testing that's amazing we it, it it's more and more often that we're writing about murder victims who are identified or their killers are identified through dna right. technology 
But it's more rare that stuff like this has happened, I think, or that we've covered at least. Yeah. I mean, that's got to be nice for the family if the family, you know, is still around. Yeah, definitely. It's pretty amazing. The power of DNA. Similarly sad and uplifting. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it gives you closure and like you kind of know. I mean, I guess you'll never know what exactly happened to him, probably. But yeah, I mean, it was in the middle of a battle. Um, so yeah, presumably it's not too hard to figure out what happened. Yeah. I wonder why he didn't have like his ID tags and stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, all they knew at the time was that he was there when they went in. He wasn't there when they came out. Hmm. Um, the Germans never claimed to have taken him as a prisoner of war. It was not in any of their records or anything. So. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, like you said, sad, but also. Nice closure. Yeah. That's a nice little ribbon on that whole story. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. I mean, these next, both of these next two stories are really interesting, but more interesting that they're both from Norway. Yeah. Right. Well, the, the yeah. first one is about this guy who discovered these Bronze Age rock paintings um, on a hike. The thing is, he wasn't just like a guy on a hike. He was an amateur archaeologist and like he and his friends searched for petroglyphs in their spare time. So when he saw this rock, he was like, I think this could be something. And then he had an app on his phone that tells you if the pigments are natural or not. And once he oh. used the app to take the picture and look at the rock face, he could sort of see figures like people and um, animals, people rowing in like a boat, things like that. He's like, oh, this is like oh, really, really cool. something then. And they think... That at one point, the whole rock face might have been just like covered with paintings, which, of course, you know, um, the elements Eroded and everything. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. But there's an overhang over this part of the rock, which might have protected the stuff, preserved it. And it's like huh. very, 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 very faint. But yeah, that's very neat. It's crazy how far apps have come. Yes. No kidding. Remember, remember <laughs> when they were advertising the iPhone and it was like, look, you can fake drink a beer. Right. Yes. <laughs> now you can you identify can petroglyphs. Bird. Yeah. Did you say flappy that's bird? That's very cool. It's called something else yeah was it not flappy bird it was angry oh, birds, angry birds. But oh i've never heard of flappy, I'm bird. About flappy <laughs> bird i thought, I thought you uh, <laughs> you can't download it anymore because the guy who made it got death threats because the game was too hard oh yeah and there we that's go that's another thing if you ever find an iphone that still has flappy bird on it you can sell that on ebay for like way too much money maybe in a thrift store someday maybe um i'll say one more thing about this rock face that that was cool is he he and his petroglyph hunting friends like apparently they're they're most easy to find uh, at like sundown or sunup. And that's because they think they used to interact with firelight. It kind of like, that's what they would have like, looked like they were moving kind of in the firelight and everything. Yeah. So that's when they're most visible is because that's when they were designed to like be, be out. Huh? Yeah. I thought that was neat. Yeah. That's very cool. I mean, that makes sense. I guess if they were, that's how they would have told stories. Yeah. So the flames of the in the dancing shadows would only help in the immersion of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of a, like a it's like a ancient film projector almost. Yeah, yeah, it's a really cool, cool image. I think. Yeah. Do you know which uh, region of Norway this was in? I think it's near Oslo, but they didn't want to say exactly where the rock face was in case people go and like touch it and damage it. Uh, that's fair. Yeah. yeah, I was just curious. I was just curious how how close these two stories might oh. possibly be. Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, I, but I, unfortunately, I don't know anything about Norwegian geography, <laughs> so it doesn't actually matter. Because this uh, this one took place in this next story happened in Setesdal, Norway. So don't know how far that is from Oslo, mm -mm, but me neither. another just kind of random happenstance style story. Uh, this man named Oddbjorn Holm Highland was digging in his backyard to prep the ground for a home expansion and as he was digging he came across this big oblong shaped rock and kind of thought nothing of it at first moved it out of the way kept digging and then said that he came across a piece of iron that looked a lot like a blade hmm. and it turns out it it was a blade <laughs> that belonged to a viking warrior 1100 years ago wow god can you even imagine doing that finding that in your backyard oh it'd be so cool yeah it'd be so cool and yeah, basically what they found was that this was a Viking burial site and they kind of theorized the reasoning that it might have been here. And a lot of it was like for the family to be able to claim the land that that Viking warrior would have owned. Mm -hmm. And so they erected a visible grave site, but it wasn't like large or flashy. Like when like when I say he found a stone, it wasn't like a tombstone. It was literally just like a rock right. that just served as like some sort of marker. Yeah. 
uh, the interesting thing about this Norway grave is that there that there wasn't a body, and they think that like maybe it was cremated, possibly, and like put there. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was kind of curious that they found all this stuff there and and no body. Right. Yeah. Relatively well preserved. Yeah. No. No remains, human or animal. They also found a lance, glass beads, a gold gilded belt buckle, and a bronze brooch. Hmm. So just a lot of like sentimental identifying objects. Yeah. Hmm. And then the other really interesting part of it was they hadn't found anything else at this guy's property, but a nearby farm in the 1930s, they made a very similar discovery Mm -hmm. and they found a sword, spear, glass beads, and a horse bridle. Wow. So those like could maybe be related in theory. Yeah. They said it's quote a bit too early to determine if the sites are connected, Mm. but it's interesting that they're relatively close and have almost identical finds in them. Yeah. Boy, it makes you wonder what what this full story is there. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just very, very cool. And the fact that there were two in like a relatively close area. Yeah. Like if I, if I lived around there, I'd start digging. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, we just cover this stuff all the time. I mean, Europe mostly, but people just are out, like you said, with a metal detector or digging in their backyards and they find these incredible things. Yeah. Yeah. History's all around us. Uh, yeah, we always say you never know. You never know. Yeah, should be our <laughs> so our site Go slogan outside, or something. You never know. Touch grass. Yeah. Maybe dig it up. Maybe dig it up. Maybe find yeah. some Norwegian Take a break stuff. from Twitter. Mm-hmm. Take a break from threading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, social media in general, perhaps, but yeah. I'm mad nobody in our work Slack replied to my <laughs> I thread. I saw I saw that and I like. <laughs> I laughed and then I didn't I didn't say anything. I know. And then no one else I, did like, either. Yeah. Our boss says, is anyone on threads? And I said, Oh yeah. Been dropping some fire threads. Like I write threads, <laughs> not tragedies, and don't thread on me. Radio and then silence. I got no reaction. <laughs> and I was like, cool. I guess I don't have a job anymore. I know. And Matt got a little weird emoji for what he said. It's I know. Funny. I didn't even get a it takes two <laughs> seconds to re- reply with a laughing crying face, guys. Come uh, on. Yeah. Give me something. <laughs> yep it's a tough tough audience slack yeah yeah (laughs) um oh well yeah oh well hey listeners do me a solid uh at austin c harvey all one word austin charvey if you want to pronounce it that way on threads just go give go give i write threads not tragedies a couple likes send send some love Yeah, well, those are our news stories for the month of July, and yeah, we also have some historical anniversaries, as always. To start things off, we have the anniversary of the beginning of the Battle of Gettysburg, which started on July 1st, 1863. Big deal. Big deal, this battle. Yeah, kind of. It was basically like the turning point of the Civil War. Robert E. Lee thought if he could win the battle and invade the North, he would force a quick surrender, but he lost the battle. And was forced to retreat. And the war went on for two more and years. Now, <laughs> yep. Yeah. And now Gettysburg is one of the supposedly most haunted locations in the United States. Is it really? Oh, yeah. People talk about... I think there have been like multiple books written about the Gettysburg ghosts. Oh. Have you been there before? Is that close to you? No. Um, no. I mean, I could drive there probably three and a half hours. Oh, that's close-ish. That's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Be a day, I could do it in a day trip. I'd be cool to see. I think I would like to go there. Yeah. I'd like to go in October when they're, I know they definitely do like paranormal tours. Uh, I, I have never been to a Civil War battlefield before, but when I visited my friend in South Carolina, just like driving to where she was, there were um, small like uh, signs on the side of the road being like, this was a battle. Da, 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 da. Oh, that's kind of cool. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. But I've never been to like any of the big ones. Yeah. I kind of want to see a Civil War reenactment. Hmm. Have you ever seen Conan O'Brien join Civil War reenactors? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes I That's have. one of my favorite clips of his. So I love funny. Conan. Me too. Big fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll say just two more things about Gettysburg because I like the Civil War is really fascinating. Yep. But uh, <laughs> I, knew, I, knew, I knew you would have stuff to say about Gettysburg. I didn't write any notes down. I was like, Cleaner's got this. I got this. So we, the, the Confederates retreated and the Union failed to pursue them. And Lincoln said, we had only to stretch forth our hands and they were ours. He was really frustrated by that 
failure. Understandably. And then, of course, he gives the Gettysburg Address like a month later, which is one of the most famous moments of his presidency. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because there was he wasn't even like the main speaker. There was a guy before him who spoke for like a long time. And then Lincoln got up and spoke for like 30 seconds. And that what he said was so, you know, just immortalized yeah. into that moment. I mean, it kind of says a lot that you don't even know who spoke before. Him. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Was the the Gettysburg Address was the four score in seven years now? Yes. Oh, just four score. Yeah. OK. As longer than 30 seconds. It was like a couple of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um but it was very short it's only i mean here it's formatted in three paragraphs wow yeah lincoln was a pretty incredible writer i mean if you haven't read some of his inaugural addresses like it's excellent I, stuff i haven't but I, i'm gonna have to check them out now because there's something to be said about brevity yeah he just was a fantastic yeah writer apparently he had a very high-pitched voice i heard that yeah did they i never saw the lincoln movie but i Oh, with Daniel Day-Lewis. I can't remember if they, yeah, did Daniel Day-Lewis, like, do a higher pitch voice? I think he had kind of, like, a reedy voice, you know? Did he? From what I remember. Yeah, I've I've heard that about Lincoln, which is funny because he was tall. Mm -hmm. And tall people generally have, like, tall men generally have deeper voices. Yeah. I don't know. That might not be true, actually. I I don't know that for a fact. Well, yeah, but it feels, like, surprising for some reason that he would have a high pitch voice, but I don't know. Apparently he did. I think it's just because we, like... We like hoist him up on this deserved pedestal. Mm-hmm. So you kind of think that he would four score and seven. Yeah, but it was four score <laughs> yes. and seven years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we get the Lincoln fans after us for that. But yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Maybe that's why it was such a big deal, though. It wasn't actually the, I mean, the speech is good, but maybe it was more so that like instead of a commanding, domineering presence with his deep voice, it was like he was so soft-spoken and quiet and high-pitched, people really had to listen. Hmm. They're like, what's he saying? I can't be quiet. I <laughs> Most of them probably couldn't hear it, too, because they were, there's no, like, microphones. They're all, like, standing far away. Yeah, yeah. Giving a speech back then would be very weird. Yeah, definitely. Well, I guess let's now jump ahead almost 100 years. Yeah, to a different war. To a different war in a different city. And an accidental bombing, the Boise bombing raid. That's crazy. Yeah, I like, yeah, briefly read up on this story, but um, it was a group of trainee bomber pilots Mm -hmm. in World War II. Um, They were flying a B-17 Flying Fortress bomber, went off course and they were aiming for a target in Conlin, Texas. Mm-hmm. Somehow found themselves over Boise City, Oklahoma. 43 miles away from their target. Right. Uh, and then saw lights around the city courthouse and assumed that was their target and dropped five bombs around it. God. It's amazing that no one was killed or even hurt in this. It's f- I was flabbergasted when I saw that. Yeah. I guess they almost hit a couple of houses and they almost hit a fuel tanker truck, but they didn't. Yeah. It's incredible. Like it was just a couple craters in the earth, which I don't know if that's impressive or just shows really how bad these guys were at their jobs. Yeah. (laughs) Not the best. Yeah. I mean, one of the bombs is still on display in Boise City. You can go and see it, which Mm is neat. I, I, it's not active. Right. (laughs) Right. It's, it's been blown up. It's just the shell. Well, and Boise Stands is the only town accidentally bombed by the U.S. military. So it's a pretty good track record. Claim to fame. Yeah. How many were how many were intentionally bombed? <laughs> <laughs> They'll never tell you. Right. They'll never tell you. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. <clears throat> no, what else to say? Oh, it, it happened just after midnight, too. That was the other thing, which can you like I, that, that's terrifying. Imagine waking up to that. Yeah. And it's it's 1943. So it is like World War Two. That would be terrifying. This is yeah. post Pearl Harbor. <laughs> I mean, if I was in Boise, I'd be like, why are they bombing Boise? Maybe it is a but bit of a yeah. I don't know. I mean, I guess anything's possible during during war. Yeah. And this is this is Boise. This is Boise City, Oklahoma, right? Not right. Not Boise, Idaho, Correct. which also threw me for a loop. Same. Which I didn't even realize until you start, you start you said Boise, and then I was like, oh yeah, there's another Boise. Yeah, I had to do like a triple take mm-hmm. when I was writing out my notes. Yeah, Boise City. Not Boise, which makes it even weirder. Yeah. Because I've never heard of it. I've at least heard of Boise. The whole thing is weird. Yeah, it's just a miracle that no one was seriously injured by this yes. mistake. 
But speaking of mistakes, our next story. This one's really sad. I mean, it's horrible. Um, it's a little funny, it, but like a, a morbid little funny, way. but it's also horrible. And we have covered this on the site. Yeah, yeah. This was in the 1990s, 93. This guy named Gary Hoy was trying to prove to some architecture students that these glass windows in a building in Toronto um, were unbreakable. So he threw himself against the window and they did not break, but the window frame did give way and he fell, plummeted to his his death. Yeah. And this was not, it, it, it wasn't even the first time that he had done it right. in that day. Uh, <laughs> like he had done it multiple times before on previous days, but that morning, earlier that day, he rammed himself full force into the window and nothing happened. God. And then he ran himself full force into the same window and it popped out of its frame. Oh, it's like horrifying. Yeah. And he was a lawyer. He wasn't like on drugs. He wasn't like. It was like a party trick. Like he was like, look at this yeah. thing. Yeah. He was just impressed. He was just like, wow, I can't believe how good modern architecture is. This is crazy. Look at this. Yeah. 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 I mean, the window didn't break. So the glass, I guess, was strong. Fair. But he never said he was impressed by how strong windows were. <laughs> He said he was impressed by modern architecture, <laughs> and technically the architecture is what failed. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, yeah it's just um, maybe not funny. It's funny is not the right word. It's, it's ironic. Yeah. It's a very ironic Morbidly story. Morbidly ironic. Yes. Yeah. I guess speaking of, like, death again, we can move on to the next yeah. story, <laughs> which is when Lady Jane Grey became queen of England and when she was deposed, which happened in a nine day span. It's such a cool story. Wow. I think, you know, she she was like a distant cousin of Henry VIII's son, Edward. So when Edward died, he didn't want to give the throne to his sisters. He wanted like a male Protestant. So he basically gave he decided to give the throne to Jane's sons or the sons of his of her sisters. She didn't have any children at the time. Okay. But once Jane became queen, Edward's older sister, who's Mary the First, like was like, "What the heck? Like I should be next in line." And that was a much stronger claim to the throne, so Jane was imprisoned in the Tower of London. Mary was going to let her live, but then her father participated in like a rebellion against her, and Mary said that Jane and her husband had to choose between converting to Catholicism or dying, and they chose to die. So they died. Wow. Yeah. England, crazy place. It's crazy. I think that whole the whole saga of like Henry VIII is. I don't know. I, I think we talked about this last month, maybe about him. I think we've talked about Henry VIII a lot, like the past three months <laughs> for some reason. He's just there was making that pendant. news. Yeah, that's right. The pendant. It was last month Anne Boleyn was that one of our anniversaries? I don't know. Possibly. Yeah, I remember we talked about Anne Boleyn. I think it was. We yeah. definitely talked about Anne Boleyn. Remember that? Yeah. 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 Well, when you get when you marry and divorce and kill however many of your wives, mm -hmm. six. Well, you didn't. There, yes, there are six there, wives. That's what I thought. Yeah. Right. Yeah. As if they were all in different months, that's half the year. <laughs> yeah. So, right. It's a lot of wives. Yeah. A lot of drama. You can always count on Henry the Eighth to give you an anniversary. Right. And Jane was just sort of like an offshoot of this drama like, i think she's kind of seen as you know she's like a footnote to this whole story but yeah she wasn't really like directly like you said she was only queen for what nine days mm -hmm. the nine days queen she's called yeah yeah is she because i don't know english monarch lineage was her last name being gray was she married to earl the earl gray <laughs> that the t is named for was uh, there an earl gray? <laughs> i don't know if there was she she oh. was her her mother was henry's sister i think or no, her mother was the daughter of henry's sister so i don't know where earl gray came into that or if that was a person or what the history is there they make like a like a lady gray tea don't they oh i don't know i know there's like a like a feminine yeah lady gray tea hmm. it's very similar to earl gray tea it's similar what's the difference earl gray is black tea flavor with bergamot but this also has lemon peel and orange peel so it's just a little more citrusy i see Mm. Charles Gray II, Earl Gray, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom from 1830 to 1834. So not the same timeline. No, hundreds of years later. Yeah. But interesting that there is a Lady Gray tea. It is interesting. So. Yeah. Poor Lady Gray. Yeah. I mean, I guess our next story is also about England, but sort of better and happier. 
Yeah, July 17th, 2013, the UK Parliament passed the Marriage Same-Sex Couples Act, uh, which was sort of a amended revision of the Marriage Act of 1914, but obviously expanded the legality of marriage to same-sex couples and couples in which one person had changed genders hmm. to live in legally recognized partnerships similar to marriage. Wow. Yeah, there, I mean, there's a lot more like legislation and stuff to it. I, I'm not going to bother to get into yeah. it. Yeah. Well, the U.S. followed a couple of years later, 2015. So yeah, yeah. Which I forget that it's that recent that gay marriage was legalized. Yeah, it's crazy how recent it is and how quickly things changed, like in, from the aughts into like now. You know. Yeah. So like, I think when Obama ran for president, he was like, "Yeah, we shouldn't legalize it," and then he came out later to be like, "Yes, we should," and obviously it was legalized while he was president by the court. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The fact that it hasn't even been hasn't even been a decade in the United States yet, which is no wild to think about. Yeah. And only 10 years in the UK, too, which I yeah, I, I never even really thought much about when it was legal in the UK or not. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I, I didn't live there. Yeah. I mean, you know, just throughout the yeah. 20th century, how different things were. It's interesting. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a nice celebration, um, a nice thing to like commemorate and recognize 10 years, a whole decade. Mm -hmm. Still have a long way to go, obviously, with a lot of things in that regard. Yes, but for sure. It's progress. Mm -hmm. It's progress. It's good. Yeah. What else we got? What else? July 20th. I almost said June. <laughs> June lie. Uh, July. July 20th, 1973. Um, legendary actor Bruce Lee died. Yeah. And he's only 32. Very unfortunate. Yeah. Him and his son, Brandon Lee, both died very young. Yeah. Brandon was 20. Very tragic ways. Yeah. Bruce Lee, it's a very strange story because no one really knows what happened. Like he died of a uh, cerebral edema. I'm saying that right? Edema? No, not edema. Yeah, well, yeah. Not a doctor. The cause of his death is unknown. It could have been medication. It could have been heat stroke. And he'd had his underarm sweat glands removed oh. the year before. So I guess that could do it. He did he wait, you say he had to or he just did? He he just did. Actually, I'm not really okay. sure if he had to or if he just did, but I'm pretty sure he just did. Okay. Yeah. Strange. But there's been like tons of rumors about like what actually happened. And, and they're, I mean, they're all like kind of nuts. It's like the mafia was maybe yeah. involved or like a, a crazy fan or a sex worker. Just like the, it runs the gamut of like things that could have happened, but they're not really sure if, if what happened, what caused this. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Very unfortunate. A lot of, uh, posthumous films of his were released too hmm. and then I, just, I don't know why i know this information but there's a lot of really weird bruce lee ripoff films mm -hmm. there's an actor named bruce lee but last name spelled li hmm. who also does a lot of like b kung fu movies oh interesting huh like kind of capitalizing on the bruce lee name it's a very it's like a it's i mean it's a whole rabbit hole yeah <laughs> but it's a very weird thing there's like bruce lee with li and then there's like another bruce lee who also makes really crappy kung fu movies and they're all just trying to like do the bruce lee thing except like they're obviously not him hmm. it's really really strange yeah that is really strange especially given how long it's been since bruce lee died right yeah 50th anniversary yeah. Um, yeah. He and his son are both buried in Seattle. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, it's very, un very unfortunate. You ever have you ever seen Bruce Lee movie? Um, Enter the Dragon or anything? I don't think I have. No. Oh, they're good. They're fun. Yeah. They're very fun movies. I've seen clips, but never the full movie. I don't think. No better time to watch them than on the 50th anniversary of his death. That's true. We got one more, one more anniversary that kind of goes along with our monthly cocktail as well. Yes. Yes. The, uh, yeah. The creation of, of NASA. Yeah, July 29th, 1958. Mm -hmm. Eisenhower signed this into law. This is when the space race was heating up. Um. <laughs> yes, Austin's I have gone on astronaut, astronaut mode <laughs> in, in Google Meet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a. Uh, the space race was heating up. Sputnik had just been launched a couple months. Well, in October 1957, so it was like time to get serious about space exploration. Yeah, and they did it uh, 10 years, well, 11 years, 11 years later, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first men on the moon. And when they came back down to Earth, they were greeted with their very own cocktail. Hmm. Uh, it's called the Moonwalk Cocktail hmm. and uh, a little bit of a little bit of backstory on it. 
He was created by Joe Gilmore, the head barman of the Savoy Hotel's American Bar, to commemorate the return of astronauts Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong. But it is said, it is said that um, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, the first beverage that they sipped upon returning to Earth was this drink, Hmm. which is kind of neat. That's very cool. Yeah. Um, We kind of joked on the 1904 Olympic podcast about like being handed a Dr. Pepper after running this race right. and how crazy that would be but also very cool to come back down to earth and have this guy be like hey i made this cocktail for you right yeah it looks good too yeah i mean it's a super simple thing it's just one ounce of fresh grapefruit juice one ounce of grand marnier three drops of rose water and then you top it with champagne mm. um so everything but the champagne goes in a shaker you strain it into a champagne flute top it with champagne it's a very simple cocktail but it <laughs> Sounds delicious. That sounds fantastic. Love champagne cocktails. All right. Austin, coming back down. (laughs) Coming back down to Earth. Oh, there you are. (laughs) (laughs) It's over. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. It's been a a wild, wild month of news and history and and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And the thing we kind of never really talk about it because it's not always pertinent to history, but... Obviously, all this stuff's available on the website, but I, like I said, I think this has just been a really weird month for our news stories in general. Yeah. Yeah, there's been some good ones. Even one I wrote today about this woman who was trying to hire a hitman to kill her toddler. Uh, you know, we've we covered this website before on the site. Re- Last month, hitman. I wrote a story about rentahitman.com. This is at least our third story on this website. Because yeah, I wrote one about think, it last year. Four. Jeez. I think we might have four total. So uh, this is apparently a thing that happens very often. People go to rentahitman.com, which is a parody website. It's very clearly a parody website when you go to it. I mean, it, it is like and customer it's not, testimonials and stuff. Like if you're like, like looking for a hitman it, and you want to find this thing, I think you're it's convincing <laughs> enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, word of advice for anyone looking to buy a hitman, you're not going to find it on the regular Internet. That's going to be a dark web sort of thing. Mm. Yeah. I won't go into further detail. I don't want to be held liable for. (laughs) (laughs) Right. I've never been on the dark web. I'm I'm good. Um, But you would need a Tor browser and ideally like a very strong VPN. Okay, sounds like you do know some things about the dark web, but uh, that's fine. We can move on. I just know about technology. I just know about internet safety. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it was kind of a horrible story that that she hired to kill oh, her sure. child. I mean, well, no one died. That's true. Yeah, the Ren Hitman guy like has prevented murders because he tells the police, and then the police. Yeah, get it's involved. very cool. Yeah, once they know they're it's serious. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, we talked, and we'll probably talk about it more um, in the coming weeks when we do our UFO at podcast, but. Obviously, there's been a lot of breaking news in that regard as well um, Mm -hmm. with David Grush, the UFO whistleblower coming forward saying that the United States military has UAPs, potentially pilots bodies. Um, David Grush from Pittsburgh represent. Hey, there you go. There we go. So, I mean, yeah, we'll we'll obviously be diving more into that. Yes, very soon. Yeah. Next month. Yeah. Uh, Funnily enough, my therapist told me this morning and I don't know how. I, I don't know how accurate this is, but apparently they're going to be Congress or the government, U.S. government is going to be declassifying some more hmm. UAP related documents next week, maybe or the oh, week after. That'd be, that'd be perfect for our uh, our show. It would. Our purposes. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, that's ongoing stuff. I mean, we're always talking about it. Um, yeah, but just so much other cool and crazy and weird stuff going on right now. Yeah, definitely. It's news every day. Um, All of the stuff we talked about here today, all of the other cool stuff that we cover is available always at allthatsinteresting.com. If you want to send us any messages uh, directly, podcast at allthatsinteresting.com. We also generally have like Spotify pulls up at the end of episodes now. Mm -hmm. Um, And we do we do read those and we've uh, we've got some criticism. We've got a little bit of criticism lately that. We should maybe address uh, just sort of a general note. We do everything we talk about here. We tend if it's a serious subject, we do take it seriously. Definitely. I know I have an issue of I, I get a little giggly when things get a little when things get too serious. I My natural inclination is to lean into lighthearted stuff in comedy. 
but sometimes I just like when something when I find something so ridiculously unbelievable and then like it's like, oh, my God, I can't believe that happened. I chuckle. Mm -hmm. That's just my natural response. That doesn't mean I don't take things seriously. Yeah, yeah. that's all. I have to say in that regard. And I know, I know you obviously take things very seriously here as well. Oh yeah. Oh, we definitely do. We know a lot of the stuff we cover is very like dark and, you know, it's crime and I don't know, some, some stories that are yeah. tough, tough stories. Yeah. We try to look yeah. at it from like all angles and give a full right. account. Yeah. I mean, we're not journalists in the sense of like going out and covering hard hitting news stories and directly interviewing sources and all that. But we do take like a very, unbiased or we try to at least right a very neutral yeah and we try take on most things at least when it comes to writing our stories and like the way we pre present a narrative mm -hmm. so definitely that said i mean that's all to say yeah we do i mean we we appreciate getting reviews and we like getting reviews and hear what people are liking and and not liking about the show oh, um, for so sure. keep yeah. those coming yeah. and we're always you know striving to improve the show and the content and everything so that's really helpful to totally yeah. to hear and read yeah i mean yeah we're definitely we're definitely listening and all of that stuff is taken into consideration and that's you know part of the reason we're doing some more lighthearted stuff lately with the exploding whale and mm -hmm. the olympic marathon and these upcoming ufo stories are going to be I'm sure a wild time. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to those yeah. series. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'll just, I'll just plug our, our newsletter and our membership. The newsletter, if you want to keep on top of all the stories we cover is all interesting.com slash sign up, or you can become a member at all interesting.com slash membership. Yeah. And then, um, no one's done this yet. Um, so if you want to be the first person to do it, that'd be really cool. Sure would. But feel free to give us a call and leave us a message at 929-526-3029. And we, you know, depending on what you say, might play it here on the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or if you have any suggestions for stories you want us to cover, uh, anything in that regard. Yes. If you're anti-phone, which people of our generation sometimes are. You can also email us at podcast at allsinteresting.com as well. And we have gotten messages there, which have been yeah. Oh, yeah. neat. So, yeah, say hello. Send us a story. Yeah, it's always fun. I'd rather, with this upcoming UFO stuff, I'd rather get somebody else's story than have to, like, go on Reddit and see what people are saying. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And tell your friends about it. We're trying to be... We're trying to get our podcast more popular than uh, Harry and Megan's podcast. Yeah. That's the goal for the end of the year. We want more listeners than Harry and Megan. I don't know how many listeners they have, but we want more. Wasn't theirs just like shut down? Yes. <laughs> we, might have already, we might have already hit our goal. <laughs> All right. Pop the champagne. We're having moonwalk cocktails. Let's do we it. did it. All right. Cool. Play, play the celebration music. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll be back with uh, UFOs very soon oh yeah we will get your tinfoil hats ready <laughs> <laughs>